Hi there, good morning. I'm Martha and this morning I'm going to take you on a tour of my nature space. Well, I'm going to be focusing particularly on fungi and soil, two really important aspects of any nature space and any ecosystem that often get overlooked. Before I get started, I'd like to say that I really hope we'll have lots of comments and questions, but because I'm filming this myself, I'm not going to be able to answer those questions as we go along. Now, so first of all, I'm just gonna take you on a tour of our little space. And one thing that I'm really proud of with our nature space is that it's small, but I think we packed a lot into it. And I should add that I've we've got two young children we use this space a lot it's not um, off bounds it's open for for play so here we go we've got in our garden um, we like to leave plants um, throughout the year this won't this fennel here won't be cut down until the end of the until next summer really when the new fennel starts going through that's extra structure in the garden it provides habitat and food for all sorts of creatures um, I'm not very keen on weeding you can see down here we've got all sorts of things that would sometimes be considered weeds but they're great for, for pollinators and for habitats for all sorts of things um, we've got some raspberries through here you can see even in a small space we've got quite a diversity of things here. Um, we've got nice dark corners that don't ever really get cleared out. So these would be great for, well, you can see, um, let's have a look what we've got under here. Oh, under a plant pot, a worm. Fantastic. Um, carrying on around the space, we've got our pond, which I'm very proud of. And something so exciting. I've just spotted something that I've been waiting for for four years, but I'll hold off for one moment. Hold on, because I want to tell you about the pond. So um, we added this little pond because we're always told that having a pond is pretty much the best thing you can do for nature in your garden. We added this pond during lockdown. And um, yeah, even though it's small, we've made sure that we've got it, that it's deep enough for um, uh, creatures such as newts or frogs to overwinter without getting frozen. Now, I think you all saw the excitement on my face just now. I've seen something very unexpected. I'm going to talk through it carefully. Um, so, as you can see here, I've got this bit of dead wood. We wanted to make the pond look a bit more natural. And you know I wanted to talk about fungi while we were here. This bit of dead wood is, was um, cut down from a forest somewhere about four years ago. It was part of a research project we had to understand where fungi, well, to understand what makes fungi produce those mushrooms that you see in the autumn. Because what's really important to understand about fungi is that most of the time, the majority of the fungi is within a bit of dead wood or whatever it's growing on. This bit of dead wood here, which I've got in my garden just for the, per for the, well, because it's great habitat, will be chock full of fungi as tiny little threads called mycelium that are like tubes that run through whatever bit of wood or other material we're looking at. When conditions are right, the fungi um, will use all that energy that they've gained from growing in the wood to produce a fruit body. And that's what I've just seen over here because these logs were colonized about four years ago. They were, we, we pumped them chock full of um, oyster mushroom um, mycelium. And what I've just seen, I know, I know this isn't spectacular, but what we've got here is a tiny little oyster mushroom fruit body. And you can see, if I show you the underneath, so this is actually an edible mushroom, I'm not going to eat it, but you can just see those beautiful gills under there. Just give a moment to look at those. Oh, look, there we go, that's popped into focus. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so 
the way that we got this fungus to grow there is, um, let's see, so I've told you that fungi grow is mycelium. Well, we got little dowels, so little bits of wood, and I'm trying to find one. Oh, I think there's a great one in here. Um, yeah, so if you look here, oh, let's get this log out. There we go. What we've got here, can you see on the surface here, there's this little wooden peg and it was hammered into the wood, into a hole. That wood was chock full of fungal mycelium, of the oyster mushroom mycelium. We hammered these in all over logs. Here we go, here we go. Um, and sealed them with cheese wax so that other fungi couldn't get in behind them. And then we left them in really nice conditions for a few years with the hope that they would grow mushrooms. And as we've seen over here, the mycelium grew out into the wood. Eventually that mycelium has colonized enough space and got enough nutrients to produce this beautiful little fruit body. So just to take a step back, because I do apologize. You've seen how excited I got about that. That was not part of the plan because I only saw that fruit body, that mushroom this morning. And as I say, that's something I've been planning for about four years. I, th I thought the fungi hadn't taken in there, and that these would just be, um, well, I wasn't expecting any oyster mushrooms. So let me take a little breath and get back on track. So I was showing you around the nature space. Um, this is another aspect of our nature space I'm so proud of, which is our native hedge. Um, this is mixed species. You can see this is only about four or five meters, but in this space we've got, we've got rosehip, we've got spindle. I can never remember what that one is. I looked it up the other day. Um, we've got blackthorn and you can see with all these different um, species, we've got different berries. So we've got blackthorn berries, sloes for slow gin. We've got hawthorn berries here. Oh, and I didn't show you properly. These fabulous spindle berries, look at those all orange and pink. They are just beautiful. Um, and I can only assume, I haven't seen lots of birds coming to eat them, but I feel like that's the sort of thing that birds would do. And it feels great having all these, um, these berries here on, on our native hedge. So we were going to talk about fungi and soil. As I said, fungi and soil are quite often really overlooked but they're absolutely key to natural ecosystems that we have around us. Um, soil is, of course, is what we see here. I think we take soil for granted. That, that's the real point about soil. We take it for granted, but it is absolutely teeming with life and it's fundamental to what grows above it. There's a lot that you can't change about soil. Um, the soil type, the underlying bedrock, but it's just so fascinating to think about the processes going on in here because what, what's in the soil influences um, what species to some extent can grow above the ground. And if we, I'm going to get mucky hands here, if we have a little look into the soil, let's see. Oh, we've got some roots here. These, and this brings me on to something I really wanted to talk about. Well, no, I'll leave that for a moment. Oh, look, we've got a wood louse. Now, fungi uh, sorry fungi soil is teeming with life and a lot of it is too small for us to see um one aspect of soil that i i looked up the number i've, I've heard this number many times about how many meters of fungal mycelium you get in a gram of soil and the the answer actually really surprised me i'll just remind you so mycelium is the bit of fungus that you can't usually see. It's these fine filaments, that, well they're actually tubes that go through different materials. Um, a couple of key things about, or one, one key thing about fungi is how they get their food because how they get their food is fundamental to the things that they do with us and the reasons that make them so important in our ecosystems. Um, fungi can't take a bite of so I'm just looking at the comment. Thank you, Rebecca Hall. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, yeah, so fungi can't take a bite out of things. They can't chew their food. They don't have mouths, obviously. But also fungi don't have green leaves like plants, so they can't make their food 
from sunlight the way plants can. What they do, fungi, um, from these tubes, these mycelium, they pump out enzymes that break down um, material around them and then they suck it back up. They suck back the goodness. Um, um, fungi, therefore, well, there are a few ways that fungi use this um, way of doing things and they make them so important. One is fungi are really important decomposers. Now, this hedge is about, I don't know, probably eight years old now. And as you can see, it is not absolutely covered with dead leaves below, which if you think about it logically, where, where you know, it's eight years old, all these trees are losing their leaves, they're falling every year, what's happening to them? Well, the fact is that fungi are one of the most important groups of decomposing organisms. They have the right enzymes to, oh, look at that lovely little spider there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Anyway, yeah. Oh, it's two of them. Oh, look at that. You probably can't see that. Sorry. Um, yeah. So what was I saying? Hmm. Um, fungi are one of the very few groups of organisms that have the right enzymes to break down the... Um, the bio the biochemicals that make leaves and wood strong so cellulose um, hemicellulose are really important um, components of wood and leaves that fungi have the ability to break down um, and so it is through the action of fungi fungi breaking down dead organic matter like you know these leftover twigs from last year, these leaves, they won't be here for long because fungi and then other organisms are breaking them down. And fungi are so important in recycling the nutrients because in that cellulose, hemicellulose, um, there are, it's the fungi, when they break down those, these um, biomolecules, they get their, um, their carbon, their energy from it, but also they release other nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, nutrients that other organisms need to grow. Um, so fungi are so important. Decomposition is something that we think of as a bit of a pain. If this um, broken down hawthorn berry was an apple in your apple bowl, you would be a bit annoyed. But if we don't break down the, the nutrients in things like these berries and in these leaves, then pretty soon we're going to have a soil that's completely depleted of um, of nutrients and other organisms further up the food chain aren't going to be able to benefit from um, those recycled nutrients. Now, I did tell you as well, I wanted to give you an idea of how much fungi there is in soil and an idea of the, uh, the scale of it. Now I heard, or I read I should say, that in one gram of soil you can get five meters of mycelium. So what I've got here is I've got my scales and I'm going to get I'm going to scoop up some soil. I want one gram of soil. See what one gram of soil looks like. Oh my goodness me, we've got four grams there already. No way. Right. Hold on, let's, let's try again. Don't trust these balances. See, one gram of soil. It's on zero. Hmm. Well, I don't trust these balances, so let's just say, well, we know that one, okay, that's way more than one gram of soil. It's telling me it's 12. Apparently, in one gram of soil, there are five meters, or there can be up to five meters of fungal mycelium. So imagine little tubes in that bit of soil stretching all the way here. One, two, three, four, five meters. There is in the region of that amount of fungi in soils all around the world. Think how much fungi that is. They're pretty important. Um, in terms of why you should care about fungi in your garden, it's that um, recycling process. Fungi will be important in your compost heap, but also for um, breaking down dead wood and leaves. And of course, as dead wood and leaves get broken down, they become really good habitat for other creatures around. There's another absolutely key aspect of fungi, which is their links with um, trees and plants. I don't know if you've heard of mycorrhizal fungi, but about 90% of plants around the world have this association 
with um, with fungi around their roots. So their roots are actually sheathed in it's like it's like they're wearing a glove of fungi around the outside. Now I'm afraid I am not an expert in finding mycorrhizal roots, but let's just pretend that these are. Let's pretend these are covered in that fungal sheath. The fungi cover the plant roots, it's like, like a glove, and they enable the plants to access water and nutrients in the soil that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. Um, so they help the plant in that way. The fungi in return get sometimes quite a high percentage of the carbon that the trees are making through photosynthesis. So the trees are feeding the fungi the carbon that they need to grow and the fungi are, fe are supporting the plants in sometimes quite tricky circumstances. Because fungi help um, plants get nutrients that they otherwise, nutrients and water they otherwise wouldn't be able to access, it means that they can um, be in place, they, they can thrive in places that would otherwise be quite difficult. You may also have heard of the wood wide web. Fungi are amazing communicators. Fungi I'm sorry guys, it looks like I accidentally paused that for a moment. So I was just talking about um, fungi enabling um, plants to communicate with each other. Um, do you know what? I'm going to say I feel like I've actually got rather off the topic of um, my nature space. But I am going to go back just one more little thing and just say that yes, there could be under the ground these trees, almost all species, these are almost all of them are going to have mycorrhizal associations so there are going to be fungi growing out around the roots helping those plants grow and also um, linking up different trees to each other the linkings up can be um, a mature tree um, uh, passing carbon to a younger tree through the through the fungi around the roots or it can be communicating about um, sending signals about pests and diseases and so on um, this ash, interestingly enough, you may have heard of ash because of ash dieback, of course, or you may be aware of ash dieback in connection with fungi. Um, ash is one of the few species that, that doesn't have mycorrhizal association. Wow, okay, as usual, I'm afraid I've gone off on a bit of a one when I'm talking about fungi, but I really hope I have perhaps inspired you to think about fungi and your garden slightly differently. Um, I'm just going to leave you with a view of my logs here and just show you here's some mycelium coming out I'll be keeping an eye on here over the next few weeks see if anything comes out there and also just this last thing so this is just an ordinary stick from the forest that hasn't been um, colonized with anything and you can see these little bumps all over are actually fungi that are breaking down the dead wood mycelium growing within here these on the outside, these fruit bodies, are for producing the spores that will spread the, the fungi to other places. And as the wood is broken down, the nutrients are being recycled, it becomes softer, other creatures can get in, it becomes a great habitat for all sorts of wildlife. So please make sure that you have, please make sure you have dead wood piles in your garden that don't get disturbed. This is great for all kinds of wildlife, including fungi. Don't rake up your leaves too much, or at least have, well, have a leaf pile at least. Um, and yeah, keep an eye out for fungi. Um, they're all around us and they are incredibly useful. Okay, well, I think that's me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I will now hop off and uh, see if there are any questions or comments that need addressing. Uh, we would love to hear from you about your nature space. Please do post photos, videos, comments or queries on the Naturehood um, Facebook page, or on the website, and don't forget to use the tag to hashtag nature space. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.